Sparta, or what it was known at the time, Lacedaemon, is a very interesting case for our guides. Of course, they are predominantly known by most people for one thing, the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC. But this was not the only impact that they would have on the Peloponnese and the Greek Peninsula. Later on, during the Peloponnesian War of 431 to 404 BC, Sparta would win a victory against their long-term rivals, the Athenians. This would secure them military hegemony over the South Peloponnese and cement them as a strong military power across all of Greece. However, just before the mod starts in 270 BC, in 271 BC, this military hegemony was to be shattered by the Battle of Leuctra against Thebes, where Sparta's domination and power in the south of the Peloponnese would come crashing down to earth. So today, let's talk about Sparta and show you how you can make them greater than the real-life counterparts ever could. Hi guys, welcome back, I am Red Zed, and today we are here with a fan favorite, the Spartans. Yes, a very interesting faction. Unfortunately, I feel like all the Sparta stands out there might not get the benefit of this video because it's highly likely they don't know how to use the internet. But today, we are going to be showing you how you can take Sparta from a very weak position into a pretty strong position relatively quickly in the mod. Now we start here on the south of the Peloponnese, of course, with Sparta as a large town. It doesn't have any walls, as you will see. Very historically accurate, of course. And then there's also Githian down here and Kythera across here as well. Both Githian and Kythera are towns and Sparta itself is a large town. You are in a very vulnerable position. You are surrounded by potential enemies with not too many places to go for expansion without starting big wars, but there are some opportunities for you in the mod as well. So let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Sparta. And first of all, the first strength that you have as Sparta is that you feel cool as fuck playing them. In reality though, the Spartans don't have a huge amount of strengths at the start of the mod. They do have a really nice bit of an infantry hoplite roster to start with in the game, uh, but then that's replaced by a more phalangite unit roster, and they do have some good phalangites, but all phalangites are relatively decent, so that's not a huge benefit against anyone else. But overall, they have a good infantry roster to start with. Secondly, one of those other strengths is the fact that they start very close to the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, which is an amazing monument. Gives you plus four bonus to population loyalty. But that isn't really a huge strength for Sparta, because to take that, you have to take the land first. And finally, as I'm really clutching at straws for these strengths, guys, is that you start with Messene with a draw-out battle ready for you to fight. So let's now talk about the weaknesses. And the first weakness is that this army that you start with is absolutely dog shit. It is absolutely awful. It is not glorious. It is not a marmalizing army. It is an awful, awful, terrible piece of shit army. It is horrendous. You might think that this Spartan cavalry might make it a little bit better because you've got a bit of cavalry. Oh no, Spartan Cavalry is some of the shittest in the game. Fantastic. Then we've got the Spartan Cryptia, who you might think, oh, we've got a, an actual, you know, one unit of uh, infantry here. Oh wow, 30 defense. Terrible, 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 terrible. But don't get me started on their helots. Helot archers, three morale, means they're going to run when they smell the enemy horses. Never mind when they come near them. The helot slingers awful 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 unit makes me physically sick to see how awful this unit is what a terrible terrible unit and then we have next to them the helot javelin men four morale seven missile attacks so these guys are actually okay oh they don't make me as physically sick as the helot slingers but this army that is a major weakness this army is 
practically... Oh, God. I, I can't even bring words to see how bad this army is. It goes really without saying, even though I've waffled on enough about it. This army is awful. It couldn't knock snow off a rope. It is that bad. It is horrendous. So, good luck when you're starting as Sparta. The one saving grace you do have, though, is that your general's bodyguard is strong as hell. It's unfortunate that it's not a cavalry unit, which is why you do start with a cavalry, and that is very useful, even if it is terrible cavalry. Um, but these guys, yeah, they are so strong. So if you want to stack these guys, you can do, and you're going to do some serious, serious damage. Let's talk about the other weaknesses of Sparta. Economically, you are very poor. You do have a couple of trade resources, as we can see, in Githion, but none in Sparta. But only medium farming and medium farming there, and I'm assuming low over here. So not a huge amount of money to go around. And you also start without walls in Sparta. So any one of these guys, the Antigonids or GCS, Greek city-states, could just walk in and take Sparta, which is your only place you can recruit from. So... That's not going to be good. <laughs> That's really not going to be good for you. Um, so, yeah. It's a pretty difficult start, as you can see, really, guys. In terms of other weaknesses, uh, your other weakness is the fact that you have terrible cavalry. The only cavalry you get access to without AOR is the Spartan cavalry, which is an awful unit of cavalry. Pretty much got the same melee stats as a Prodromoi. But they don't even have javelins. Like, they are awful. 25 charge is not good, but it's not horrendous. So you can still do damage with these guys, no problem, if you know what you're doing. But, like I say, compared to, say, the Agima, the Molossian Agima we saw with Epirus, compared to, say, the Thessalian Lancers, or the Companion, the Hetairoi of the Antigonids, they are not good. <laughs> so, let's talk about a little bit about the AOR units around this area that you might want to get your hands on. And first of all, the Thessalian cavalry from Thessaly over here, this region here, are fantastic cavalry. So, if you can get to there, you can get rid of all those terrible Spartan cavalry and replace them with some very good cavalry. In terms of archers, because you've just got access at the minute just to healer archers, which as we've seen, are not good. You can go to Crete and get genuine Cretan archers. So that is a good option as well. And you can get a few around this region as well, Neocretans, or some local archers that are a lot better than your ones. So those are the main strengths and weaknesses of Sparta. I hope I've not upset anyone <laughs> with that rant, but uh, yeah, I was just trying to emphasize the fact that your starting army is not good. <laughs> It is awful. One thing to note, guys, is that, of course, these uh, starting positions have all been changed, but they've tried to keep them relatively historical. So although the army isn't very good, it's probably quite historically accurate that it's uh, not very good. So uh, that's, that's one thing. And another strength that you do have that I failed to mention is that you start with two guys with seven command, which is actually fantastic. Both ready to fight. Aureus, your faction leader, and Leonidas, your uh, one of your generals, both have seven command, which is a really good starting general to build up. Fantastic, in fact. So, really good generals for you early game. So, you can maybe offset some of the uh, bad army <laughs> with that. So, here we are with the Spartan unit roster, guys. And it's an interesting roster. Very uh, infantry-based, as you might expect with Sparta. I believe Ahal telling me about... At the time, one of the conventional historians, or, or the contemporary historians, should I say, said that Sparta only had 300 cavalry in their whole army at one time. So, yeah, very infantry-based, as we might expect. You have, before the reforms, some really good options, though. So, your Cryptia are not fantastic. Let's have a look at them. They are your base level unit. They're kind of like a Thurio Foroi, but just a little bit worse. And they have no armor, so they're not fantastic. But you've also got the Skiratai, which is your only sword unit. And they are okay. They're not fantastic as well, but they've got good morale. They're going to stick around in the fight for a long time. Just not much defense. So they're going to do a lot better on flanking maneuvers than holding the line. So that's what you'd use those boys for. 
But your Perioikoi Hoplites are actually a decent Hoplite unit. 38 defense, 15 morale, and 11 attack. And your Homoyoi are a fantastic, fantastic uh, Hoplite unit. 48 defense, 22 morale, and 16 melee attack, which is insane. These guys are an absolute monstrous Hoplite unit. Incredibly monstrous. Very, very good. Almost as good as your General's Bodyguard. You can see the General's Bodyguard just has one more defense, but one less morale. And that's it. And they also have very good stamina, which is amazing for a heavy melee unit. So, yeah. The General's Bodyguard, remember, is an infantry one until you get the reforms. So, you get an infantry general. So, you have very lacking in cavalry. In terms of your missile troops, you are screwed. These guys are awful. Helot Javelin Men are okay. I mean, they're Javelin Men, so they're going to do damage if you fire in the back. But the Helot Slingers and the Helot uh, Archers are really, really bad. I mean, it says 7 morale, but in the game it says 3 morale. I wonder why that is. Why might that be? But anyway, I mean, they're not very good at all. <laughs> the main thing is, even if they have 7 morale, they're not good. Like, their, their missile attack of 5 and 5 is not fantastic. Uh, and their defense is woeful. So these guys are not good as missile units. But all missile units do have power if you use them correctly, of course. And cavalry options, you only have one. And it is the Spartan Cavalry. So remember, if you want good cavalry, guys, go to Thessaly. Get Thessalian Lancer Mercenaries or Thessalian Lancer AOR. Because those cavalry units are some of the best cavalry units in the game. So go to Thessaly if you want good cavalry. Because your cavalry unit is pretty much like a Thurio Foroi cavalry, but doesn't have javelins. <laughs> so it's not really worth it. This cavalry is only good for chasing down enemy units. They are not good at all. Of course, you do get your Spartan cavalry bodyguard after the reforms, which is pretty much a standard Greek general's bodyguard. So decent unit nonetheless after the reforms. But the reforms, let's talk about those guys. So you need to have had 47 turns and have done 15 battles specifically against the Antigonids. So not just anyone, it has to be against the Antigonids. So 15 battles against the Antigonids. And you get your Uzonoi, which is actually your first good missile unit. These guys are actually a really decent Peltast with 23 defense. That's always good. And 14 morale is excellent as well. As well as the 12 missile attack with their Javelins. So these guys are fine. They're pretty darn good as a Uzonoi unit. Now, along with that, you lose your two uh, Hoplite options. And you get the Phalangites instead. So we got the Neo Damodeus, which is the new citizens. So not the official Spartan citizens, but basically they ran out of official Spartan citizens and had to get uh, other people and call them citizens. So that is the Neo Damodeus um, Phalangites. And you've also got the Perioikoi Phalangites as well. So the Perioikoi Phalangites are quite. Not great for a Phalangite unit. 34 defense is fine. 17 melee attack is not as good as some others. So a pretty mid to low tier Phalangite, I've got to say. But a mid to low tier Phalangite is still good. Because Phalangites in certain situations are fantastic. In others, not so much. But in uh, then they have the Neo Damodeus Phalangites. I'm sure these guys are the new citizens. But someone comment down below and correct me if I've got that the wrong way round. But uh, we have the 38 defense, uh, 17 morale, and 19 melee attack. So these are more up to sort of mid to high tier phalangite. So a decent phalangite. It's just a shame that you lose the really good hoplites. However, if you do want to keep these guys, there is a sub mod on the workshop that I will link down below that uh, allows you to keep these guys after the reforms. So do download that if you want it. But like I say, the roster is okay. It's not amazing. Um, it is more infantry based. And, you know, you're going to be using a lot of AOR as Sparta. Specifically for cavalry. Because infantry wise, you're fine. But cavalry wise, you are screwed. And cavalry is so strong in the game that you want good cavalry. So when you get the opportunity to get Thessalian cavalry, that's a really good opportunity for you to get a good cavalry force rather than your awful Spartan 
cavalry. So, that has been the unit roster, guys. I will see you back on the map. Right, guys, now let's have a look at the temples. And they are military-focused in a lot of cases because, of course, it's Sparta, right? Um, and, but you also do get a lore one. So let's have a look. The, the Shrine to Ares is one that pretty much gives experience and also morale bonus to troops. So that is really, really powerful. So I would recommend getting this one in your recruitment centers over the next one that we're going to talk about, the Temple of Dimos and Phobos. And this is the temple that gives you upgrades to your weapons and armor. So another really powerful, sorry, just, just uh, weapons, really powerful um, temple as well. But I wouldn't recommend getting that in your recruitment hubs. What I would recommend doing is building the Temple of Ares in your recruitment hub. And then in a next door nation, say, say we were building a recruitment hub in Sparta, we would build Githian up, not necessarily to be a recruitment hub, but to have all the blacksmiths in here that it can do. And also just this temple. And then you'll be able to get to gold, but also reap the benefits of getting all the experience and morale from the Temple of Ares as well. That is my recommendation for that. Or you can just have two recruitment hubs next to each other. One has the uh, Temple of Ares and one has Deimos and Phobos. I mean, that's completely up to you. But I recommend recruiting through the Shrine to Ares because of that experience to start with. And last but not least, we do have the Temple of Hera as well. So that is your lore temple that you're going to build in all your faraway regions where corruption's going to be an issue. But very much for a long part of the campaign, you're not going to be in many faraway regions of Sparta. So that is further down the line that you want to build that one. So guys, the part you've all been waiting for, the starting moves as Sparta. Now, remember, these tactics that I show you, there are many other tactics. These are not just the only tactics you can use. I mean, you could take this horrendous army that we talked about <laughs> and sail to Alexandria if you want. That's an option, but uh, it is not the recommended tactic from me. The tactics that I recommend to you guys are always the tactics that are, in my opinion, the easiest, the easiest for newer players. But I will propose with Sparta two more tactics that you can use if you want to. The main issue that we have in our starting position is that our only recruitment hub, which is Sparta, nowhere else has a recruitment building, doesn't have walls. <laughs> so you have to protect Sparta at all costs, guys at all costs. But let's go through those two other tactics that I think could work pretty well if you want to play. So, a bit of an easier tactic, a more beginner sort of tactic. You can go for Crete. Now, the place I would recommend landing is Kaidonia because it has no walls. So you can take this straight away and then go straight for Polyrenia and you will have these two little bits very quickly, probably within two turns if you go for that and that is a good tactic to use and then you can just start going through Crete. Now the only issue with this in my opinion is the fact that if Sparta gets attacked you're going to be over here. If your boats get destroyed you're going to be stuck. So you have to ferry your you know your troops between one and the other and it can be quite risky if your boats get destroyed and all that sort of thing. So it is a good tactic though and quite an easy tactic. It's not hard to do that either. Now the second tactic is a more experienced tactic and in fact a tactic that I would say has the highest risk but highest rewards for you. Now that is to go after the Antigonids straight away and just attack the Antigonids because once you've taken Megalopolis um, and Prasai you can go straight down here take Argos and Corinth and the whole of the Peloponnese is blocked off by you at that point. So even if the Antigonids want to come through, they've got to siege down Corinth just to get through. So you can kind of block off the whole of the Peloponnese if you do that, which is a really good tactic and a really nice one, but a little bit more difficult than the tactic I'm going to show you today. So let's talk about the tactic I'm going to show you. And it's basically, you are going to bully and <laughs> attack all of the units in here. So you are going to bully and attack all of these small nations and take them out quickly before they become strong. 
Now, there's two ways you can do this. If you don't want to destroy your boat, you can go straight for Ellis because it has no walls. However, I wouldn't recommend that because even with that tactic, it's going to take two turns to get there. You're going to get on the boat, get to about here, and then go again. So it's going to take two turns to take that, whereas you can just march to Messene and take them out. Now, the main thing with this is when you attack Messene, if you are choosing Messene over Ellis, if you attack Messene, if you attack this guy here, you can do a draw-out battle for the city. But, <laughs> but, and it's a big but, guys. It's a very big but. If you do this, make sure that you leave one of the generals surviving. Because if you don't, this will happen. And we're also going to get this guy in here to fire at the Akontistai. And when he's done, he's going to fire at those Greek hoplites over there. There we go. That's their king as well. So that is nice. That is good for us. Here we go, guys. And you can see, even on very hard, we were able to win that battle. It was brutal. It was filthy. But we managed to do it. So that's the main thing. So I'll see you back on the campaign map, guys. Here we are, guys. And Messene is now dead. Oh, you bastard. So now you know not to kill both of the generals, or at least leave some of the troops alive and don't chase them down so that you can take Messene on the next turn because you do not want it flipping to rebels. Uh, that would be really, really annoying. So instead of that, what we're going to do, we're going to use our spy. We're going to go into Messene. And uh, we have a spying mission success. And hopefully, of course, we're going to accept extreme mode. We are playing on very hard, like I've said, guys. And we are going to take this whole army apart from one of the slingers. And we are going to attack this army. Ideally, I would like to siege this place down. But we are going to attack this army and leave one of the generals surviving. So I have done this already, but unfortunately... The instability issues did uh, become a bit of a problem. So I'm going to show that to you. And on this playthrough, I'm going to toggle it with the with the console. Yes. Come on. So we are going to go straight after that first army and just try and rout him. That is uh, going to be interesting, <laughs> to say the least. I'm not sure whether it's going to work. But if we do route that first army, we've got to make sure that we don't kill the second army. Now, that is the major issue we have here. Let's group you guys together. Get you on fire at will. And we're just going to go straight for that general. And let's see. I don't really want to use my missile men too much apart from the archers here. We're going to protect the archers with our cavalry, even though we know our cavalry is trash. But that's fine. That's not a problem at all. Let's group all these boys together. Get you off that. And here we go. Where is that army? Oh, it's up here. Cool. So if you hold alt and drag, guys, that's how you do this. Then you hold control to move that around. And we are going to get away from that army to start with. And we're just going to go straight for the little uh, fight there as well. So that should be quite fun. You guys walk because everyone else is a lot slower than you, my friends. I, don't, I hope the archers don't get killed straight away. So guys, run. Looks like they're coming. Looks like they're coming. Get back, get back. No, they're going to they're gonna turn around because they see all the spearmen coming. That's fine. Uh, so let's get these guys. Okay, here they come. No problem. Let's go. Let's see if we can route them. Get you guys there. And then get you guys there. Ideally, if you're doing this and trying not to kill a general, which is very, very rare, guys. You ideally don't really want to attack them on, the left, uh, on their left flank because... That is where their general stands. So hopefully we can get him to run. Let's get that off. The Cryptia took an absolute battering in that. But we have got our general in there now, which is fantastic. And they are wavering. Good, good, good. Now we get out. Now we get out. And now we get make sure our archers are no longer firing at them by running them away. Guys, run. Do not fire, man. Did I say you should fire? So what we're now going to do is get up on the hill and defend against this second army. Because that second army will think 100% that it is a lot better than us. And it is a lot better than our army. So we're just going to form, form up here. And we shall get ready to fight the rest of the battle. 
So we've set ourselves up on top of the hill, and we've got our archers behind our main troops. Hopefully this hill will allow them not to fire at their own troops. We've also got our Akantistai over here, and the general has escaped. He has not died, as we can see, if I don't tab out. <laughs> no alerts, so no generals died. This time, though, with this army, we 100% want to kill this general. Don't worry about this guy. Let's kill him. Let's get rid of him and get rid of the rest of this army. And then we will only have this singular general to deal with. And he might not even retreat into the city. It's very likely he does, but he might not. We shall see. Here they come, guys. And we're going to focus down the Prodromoi. I know that sounds maybe counterintuitive, but I promise you it's not. What we also have to do is try to combine all his forces, all his infantry, and catch them all before they start trying to attack some of the other forces. So we are going to go after all of his infantry and hold them in a line because the best of our strength is through our missile boyos. So let's get round here. When the Prodromoy are dead, what we're gonna, then going to do is focus down the general. So come on, Akontistai, let's get going. Here comes their general. So I do need to be slightly wary of those boys. This general is a little bit stuck as well. So we are going to try and get our Akontistai around this flank here. To fire into them. We're also going to charge our cavalry in. Because our cavalry at this point is just trying to save us if they can. From our horrible woes of having no infantry. Our archers here. Let's get rid. We've got rid of the Prodromoi now. So there they go. Straight in the fight. Let's get them out. They're only good for one charge these boys. Not for sticking in. Let's now fire at the general's bodyguard if they can. I'm also going to put these guys on guard mode. So if these guys go out of range, they will not chase them. That's what it'll do. Guard mode will stop them being chased. Okay, that's good for us. Let's come round. If they attack my Akontistai, I'm not too bothered by that. Because it just fixes them for more javelins being thrown into them. It's probably going to rout this boy, unfortunately. But they are eager at the minute. Mainly because of the fact that we have so many generals. Let's rally the men with that general. And let's keep on fighting over here. And then we can start doing some proper damage. Let's try and get him. Because we are going to win this based on morale, guys. Nothing else. So now what I want to do is this guy, now once he's used all his ammunition, is charging. So let's charge. These guys still have a bit of ammunition. Got our cavalry coming round. Hopefully surrounding them. Hopefully that charge, that charge wasn't good. But it wasn't awful either. So let's get out again. You guys can now fire into this unit. Go on. Go on, the Akontistai. What a charge. The glorious Akontistai. Right, now we'll charge him again. And you can see, because we rested on the hill, all our guys are pretty fresh now, which is fantastic for us. Hopefully that charge... Yeah, that charge should have done a little bit of damage. I don't want this guy to run away. I want to kill him. So let's go for one more charge. That should be enough. And can we now charge the Greek hoplites here? We can do. They're all very tired because they've been running the whole way to fight us. So now let's try and surround this boy. Get you guys in there. One charge. One more charge. Let's go. Let's see whether it works. Hopefully we can kill him and that'll make them run. So now we're surrounding them with the cav. We maybe don't need you. So you guys get in there. And then I think we can smash these hoplites. On either side. The Cryptia are taking a bit of a damage. A bit of damage. This guy unfortunately is taking a lot of damage. But now we've got the general. He's running. Now let's kill him. The one good thing with your cavalry. Is the fact that it is light cavalry. So it will. Uh, it will chase down enemy generals. And be able to kill them. Whereas most of the time you can't catch them if they rout. Whereas with these boys you can of course. So let's go into the back of these boys. These guys are only good for charges, remember, guys. They're not fantastic at anything else. And we have been neglecting you, haven't we? So let's come around this way. Let's get you in the fight. How do they feel now? Shaken? They're not wavering yet, though. That is the problem. These guys are all shaken. So I think one more charge, potentially, into these boys should be enough. And our cavalry is taking a lot of damage. We're doing actually worse than we did last time. <laughs> but hopefully we still win. I mean, it's going to be tough no matter what to win. Steady now. Steady. Really? Wow. Right. Let's get this cavalry over here. And let's get charging. The other Akantista is completely gone. They're not happy at all. So now we've got our archers. We're all in a good position. Let's start firing in the back of these Greek hoplites. We just need one of these guys to rout. Now they're steady. Where does that steadiness come from? 
God, very hard is very hard, as you can see, guys. So what is the problem here? Concerned over exposed flanks. Well, we can make that concern worse. Glad to see enemy rousing. That's the problem. That's the thing that is keeping them here. That's it. That's got him. Come on. Kill a few more and we'll be good. Apparently not. There we go. Fantastic. Fantastic. So now that they are breaking, they should want to break everywhere else too. So let's keep on going. They shouldn't fight to the death here. Let's try and get... Now, there they go. Fantastic. It was the chain route. That is glorious. That's what we like to see. Now, we can leave you behind. But let's get these guys chasing down these men because they're very quick. And you can do that with your archers as well if your cavalry gets so damaged like ours has. There we go. That's it. Fantastic. And we're going to chase them down. And victory is ours on very hard with a helot army, boys. <laughs> so that's how you beat them just by... <laughs> <laughs> flanking them with your javelin men, killing them and killing the general. Morale, remember, is the most important thing. So always remember the morale. Now, where is the cavalry? The cavalry's getting absolutely blasted. I'm assuming by friendly fire. So let's stop these guys firing. They've absolutely just destroyed all our cavalry. So you can actually go for the kill up here rather than firing at anyone. And I will see you after the battle, guys. A crushing victory, guys, with helots. And we still got 550 remaining, which is pretty good. Look at the javelin men there doing an absolute load of damage. So maybe they're not as bad as I thought. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I'll see you back on the campaign map. So you can see, not quite as many killed as we did in real life, but still not too much left. So we're going to siege it down now. And unfortunately, the spy did not open the gates. So you can, I believe, abandon your siege a couple of times and keep trying it. But I think it's per turn that it does this. So abandon. I don't think... Yeah, I think it's per turn that it chooses whether it's going to open the gates or not. So if you're lucky, you can go and take the settlement on turn one, which would be fantastic. Now, we're going to manage our economy, haven't we? So let's do that. We've already talked about the attack plenty enough. So we're going to get uh, Sparta onto high. We cannot go to very high. But the other two can go to very high very easily. So once these are set to very high, now this is one of the few situations where I would recommend not building an economic building in your main settlement. We are going to build the Palisade just so that we cannot lose this after two turns straight away. Because that is terrible if that happens. Now we're also going to go over to Kythera and build the land clearance because we can't build any economic buildings in Githion right now. And use the rest of our money to build a Perioikoi Hoplites. Now, it's up to you whether you go for this unit or you go for the Skiritai. Both are good options. The Hoplites look a lot better on paper, but remember the Skiritai have a sword, so they will do more damage when they're flanking than the Hoplites. But for now, we just need a solid main line. We can't just sustain the line with our generals forever, so we have to use uh, some Hoplites, get them in there. And I believe, in fact, we can, in fact queue in something else so always make sure you use all of your money on the first turn guys because you're going negative anyway so if you don't use this money we are just going to waste 746 gold there when we could actually use that money to queue in a building it's not like med 2 remember guys where these only get paid for when they come first in the queue they will actually get paid for when you queue them in so we are here now and like I say, if you want to go for Ellis, you can do. But this is my preferred tactic to go for Messene. One other tip that Mosca has let me know. So thank you to Mosca on the mod team for this. We definitely want to get an alliance with the, the Greek city-states. Now, the reason being is that the we Greek no city-states... So we're not going to get an alliance just yet. We are on very hard. So it's going to be very difficult to get them to agree to it. Proposal. So they've accepted that offer. So let's actually try somewhere else yes. and just see whether it resets. And let's try an alliance this time. Yes, there we go. Proposal. The reason why we want an alliance with these guys is that the Greek city-states themselves are coded to be very passive. So they are very unlikely to attack the player even on very hard and you're bordering them. So they can act as a perfect buffer state in the center here against the Antigonids if we want them to be, which is fantastic. So guys, I'm going to end the turn and let us see how we get on. 
So now we've taken Messene, guys, and we did enslave, of course. Always remember to enslave rather than exterminate because, of course, remember that when you enslave, you are putting that population into your other cities where it's going to generate you revenue. And instantly, we are back to being financially stable, which is fantastic. We cannot build anything, though, I believe, unless we want to build in Githian. Now, there isn't really that much in here that's that uh, useful apart from the governor's villa. So we are going to actually... Um, wait for that and then try and get that into there. Messene have declared war. We are allies with Sparta and Bithynia and Seleucids have a ceasefire. That's actually crazy. Uh, silly Seleucids doing that. They can take Bithynia and out very, very quickly. So now is your option. So I've left the ship here for one turn. So one turn for the ship. Because I should have actually moved it here as well, which would have been better. But you can see it's got a lot of movement still. There are two options now. And this is what I mean about playing to your RNG. This is actually a perfect opportunity to show you this. Now, if this army, this rebel army, had stayed in Leprion, what we would have done is I would have gone to um, Ellis. Or I would have had to go through there. I would have gone to Ellis via the boat and taken Ellis out, which is a large town. So is Leprion's only a town, but that's not too much of a problem. But the rebels have given us this draw out battle opportunity. So now that the RNG has changed, the random generation of the AI and the AI's behavior has been different this time. Instead of going for Ellis, because we've been offered this opportunity, I'm going to take that opportunity instead. So we're going to control and drag this guy to mix them together. And we're going to leave the 36 Helot archers behind. And we are going to come out of the city. Now in Messene, of course, remember, let's delete that recruitment. Let's also uh, get the tax up here as well. Now, I don't believe Messene is ever going to be a, law, uh, a recruitment hub for us, although it might be. So for now, I'm going to leave the barracks in here. But we don't need this arena as well. So let's get some more money and get rid of that. I'm going to keep the Odeon just for now. But we don't need that. If you want to squeeze all the money out of here, you can do. Always remember, destroying buildings is a really good way of getting some extra cash. So let's also build in Githian. We got the... Apparently it didn't tell us that. Uh, no, it did. It did. So we've built that in Githian now, which is fantastic. That will allow us then to build a port. Oh, it has a port. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> I was going to say it allows us to build a port. That It already has a port, which is fantastic. So that is really good. So we're going to keep marching on to these guys. And if you've fought the previous battles um, manually, guys, you should have plenty enough of an army here, especially with your tanks of generals to kill that army. That is not a problem. I killed them in one of the previous runs where I took them out. But this time, because we auto-resolved, they didn't die straight away, which is a little bit annoying. But if you did that manually, you would have had Leprion on that turn. And you'd be two turns in and already two settlements up, which is fantastic for you. So let's get the end turn done and I'll show you what we want to do next. So Leprion is now ours, guys. Of course, we're going to enslave again. And this time we're going to leave behind probably the Slingers. Now, if you have fought these battles manually and you've done a decent job, you should have plenty enough troops to go now after Ellis. But if you have had a bit of a struggle with, you know, your skirmisher troops and all that sort of thing, then, of course, just come back to retrain at Sparta. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought we were going then. But we're not going to do that. In my estimations... If you're a good player, you should be able to take out Messene and Ellis with your starting army before needing to retrain. In fact, you could also go for some mercenaries, but I don't believe they will have popped up yet. Now, we're going to pop out of Leprion here. If we have a look at the buildings in Leprion, there's nothing really for us to destroy. They're all fine buildings. I mean, this militia barracks is going to not be needed, so let's destroy that as well. And now we've got plenty enough money to keep training more troops. So I'm going to go for a Skiritai this time. We can also now bring this new guy forward to come and join us. So for now, we're just going to pop him into Leprion. That does make them slightly more upset, but that's fine. Like I say, if you're an experienced player, this is the point when now you go straight for Ellis. But if you have used a lot of your troops, go back to Sparta. But of course, we're not going to go for Olympia. 
We are going to go for Ellis straight away because it has no walls. And uh, of course, we're going to console command this again. And the console command, although it makes you win, you hard, like you lose quite a lot of troops in some of the battles. So then what we're going to do, instead of waiting around, what I'm actually going to do here is leave the Helot archers behind. And we're going to go straight for Olympia. Now, it's a very risky move to do this. But it is not too problematic because the AI doesn't tend to like to take uh, Ellis back. It tends to like to come and attack you here. Now, if we destroy their recruitment building as well, now they can't even recruit from Ellis, even if they take it back. And it'll be an easy battle for us to take it off this four units once we've taken Olympia. So a really nice little tactic. And like I say, we are just going to be bumming the troops, bombing them and going around them. Now, this boat, what I'm going to do is actually keep this boat for now. Because you can see Kaidonia tends to like to go for Kythera. Which is a little bit annoying, but it's honestly not too bad. Like, <laughs> if we lose Kythera, that's not a problem at all for us. So let's have a look at what else we've got. Faction announcements, trait increase. Oh, Arrhaeus now has an epidemic of typhus, which is really bad for morale. So if you ever get something like that, always make sure you check this faction announcements to show trait uh, traits in there. And if you get something like that, the best thing you can do is go back into a city and just wait there a couple of turns, and then it should go away. So let's do our building then. Do we have anything to build? We do in Messene. So let's build economic buildings in here. Let's have a look at the port here. Let's see how that does. 133. Honestly, guys, the meta in 0.6, in, in my case, early game, is in a lot of cases just building the port. It just tends to be a better option. I mean, 133 for 2,500. Whereas with this, that's 1,200 and gets 64. So this is marginally better in terms of the output. But over time, this is going to be better because this is just a set amount you're going to get each turn. Whereas this is going to build up over time and create more and more trade. And while you're doing that, guys, always remember, you should be moving your diplomat around selling map information and getting as many trade rights as possible. Also, I remember I should probably uh, uh, t toggle the fog of war off, but you can actually see everything going on now, so it's quite good. 140. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing. Selling your map information to the AI, guys, is not an issue at all. Like, it's really not something you should be worried about. The AI kind of pretends it doesn't really know the where you are proportion. but once they've seen your lands they will know where it is and always remember so that is why you tend to see a lot of ai spies and diplomats going around and once they know where it is they will know forever so uh do remember that now we need to build in leprion as well and i think we're just going to go for that shrine to hero there to keep them happy and we're going to pop that uh, pop that up and we can't go any higher there, unfortunately. Now, is that everywhere building now? Apart from actually Ellis. So let's queue in the walls there and hope that they don't attack us. Um, one thing to note as well, guys, cultural, culturally wise, there we are Dorian. We have Dorian culture. And a lot of other places have Dorian as well um, across the map. So you are in a very good situation when it comes to culture compared to, say, um, the, uh, well, the Achaeans are Dorian. But say, like, the Aetolians, which I believe are this, Northwest Greek, which is not many places are Northwest Greek. So, yeah, you're in a really good situation when it comes to culture as well. So Sparta, you know, has some benefits, to be fair, not just negatives. But anyway, let's get back on the end turn, and I will see you in a turn or two, guys. So now we have taken Ellis, guys, and it gives you access to potentially the best monument in the game, plus four bonus to population loyalty in all settlements, not just Greek settlements, which is crazy, crazy, crazy good. So that is a fantastic monument to take early in the game now what we're going to do we are going to leave and i'm going to leave this hoplite in there just because it's got actually no let's leave these 13 helot javelin men a very cheap very very cheap uh person to leave behind so it's always a good option to leave someone very cheap and then definitely will be able to hold the line here yeah we can definitely we can even put it up to high 
And you can see with that now, even the rioting places are no longer rioting because of the monument. And that will even allow us to go up to very high in a couple of other places. Not that we really need to right now. We are flush with money for now. Now, one thing I did want to note, guys, and say is while you are doing this, the main thing you should be looking out for and worried about is the Antigonids attacking you because at some point it's going to happen. No matter what you do, they will attack you. I've also been attacked by Kydonia like down here. Like I said earlier, this is something <laughs> that will likely happen. But honestly, I'm not bothered by that at all. Um, it really doesn't bother me. What I want to do is secure the Peloponnese and take the Peloponnese. And then we can maybe think about further afield, such as Crete. I mean, if we lose this settlement, Kythera, it's making 1,200, which is good. But we can make more money by ignoring that, losing Kythera, and going after the Achaeans and the Antigonids. So we're going to do that instead. Now let's have a look at what our buildings... We've had civil disorder in a couple of places. Oh well, that's fine. We've now got Mr. Potatoes of Sparta. And we are in fact... Oh, he is very good commander. So make sure when you get commanders, guys, you always have a look at their stats. There's loads more stats in the game now. Um, and you can even look at their full stats here. So we can see he's got plus one troop morale, which is good. Plus one for a night battle. Um, and yeah, line of sight. Trade, he's really good as well. And taxes, he's fantastic. So I think he's going to be very good as a governor of Sparta to make Sparta very rich, which it already is getting quite rich. So we are going to go back to Sparta, retrain all our guys, and then we're going to have a look at what we might want to do next if we were in this situation. Let's do a little bit of building, though. It's always good to show you what I'm building. So in Sparta, for example, we are on 4,700. So we might want to go for the farm. But I'm having a look around, see what really is a good option. Let's see if the paved roads... Yeah, the paved roads don't provide that much because Sparta's trade at the moment is actually really low. So... Building the farms is by far the best option there. How about Lepron? They did rebel a little bit. And in fact, there's nothing really here we want to build. Maybe the grain imports, but it's fine. There's nothing there that's actually worth it. Now, in Ellis, which is actually quite a decent town, I think the port after the walls is by far the best option. So let's have a look at what we're going to provide. 103. Not bad at all. I mean, it's probably more efficient to go for the farm, but I want to get that port in early. So then it can start trading with our trade partners in the Aetolians and all that sort of thing. And over time, it's going to make a lot more money. And in Olympia, again, there's not really anything we want to build. I mean, the 5,000 for the grain imports early game is just not worth it for me. So that's something you might want to build later. So with those smaller ones that we can't build anything, we just want them to upgrade. And they very, very likely will do when we've taken a couple more cities and enslaved them. So, I'll see you in a couple of turns, guys, when we have retrained the army, and we've got a new, better army, and we are ready to get going. So, guys, now we're in a decent situation. We've got our army retraining, and we're getting another Skiritai into this army, so it's going to be a pretty darn good army in a little bit. What I'm actually going to do is target the cities I want to grow quickly which is definitely these towns. So, And they don't even make much money anyway. So we're going to go down to low tax rate in Leprion because I want that to upgrade so I can build a port. The same with Olympia. Ellis is fine. So all these large towns, I'm happy to keep on high because it's not hugely necessary for them to get up to minor city very quickly. But for these towns, these small towns... I really want them to upgrade so I can build ports and then have a lot more trade and a lot more money. And it really doesn't make that much difference because they're not that rich. We did lose Kythera, but like I say, it's not really a concern if that happens. If you want to go after uh, Crete after this, you can do if you've kept your ship. But for me, personally, I think it's still a lot better to just take the Peloponnese and then go after Crete when you're ready. So the dreaded has finally happened, guys. The Antigonids have attacked us. If you've managed to stave them off to this point, then the next thing I would recommend is going after the Achaeans, getting rid of those guys as soon as possible. But if the Antigonids do attack you along this journey, once you've taken out Messene and Ellis, focus all your weight on them up to Corinth and these two settlements. So you can just block off the Peloponnese and just do what you want 
after that. That, in my opinion, is the best way to go about it. So, we are going to take our generals. We are going to leave behind old Acrotatoes Potatoes. And what I'm actually going to do is another blitzing tactic that we like to use that I've shown you a couple of times before, guys. So, I'm going to come up to this one. Do we have one turn? Yes. You always want to check that you will have a one turn siege, because otherwise it's actually not worth it. And then we're going to come down to Prasai, and hopefully we've got a one turn siege as well. Fantastic. So it's a riskier way to do, but it is a blitzing way to take settlements doing this. Splitting your armies up and doing this. It's a lot better than just taking them one by one because you're going to get a lot better rewards a lot quicker. Double the amount of time, sorry, to take these one by one rather than halving it by taking them with the halved army, <laughs> which makes sense, doesn't it, guys? So, like I say, we are allied with the GCS as well, so I'm quite happy that they're going after Sophis over here. I don't really mind. This is our buffer state against the Antigonids on this side, and they can only come through this way. Now, one tactic that I've seen Rather Incoherent do quite a bit is um, fort walling, which you can absolutely do, guys. If you want to fort wall, absolutely fine. Me, personally, I just don't like to do it. Um, but if you guys want to fort wall, it is a meta, and it is a very good way of blocking off areas. So, for example, if I show you... So, we could block off, like, say, here with a fort. We could also block off here, and we could block off here, too, with a fort. So, if you wanted to do that, you can do one thing to note, these guys are definitely coming across to Assaulters, but I'm not just going to wait for that to happen. I'm going to be active and take these two settlements and then go deal with the enemy rather than, you know, going the other way round and just being passive and wasting money over a couple of turns and waiting for these guys to attack. Now, go and attack instead, and when they come, then you can react to them. I mean, we're not far away, so it's absolutely fine. So, guys, you can see Kaidonia has landed, and that is what I was talking about. They didn't even siege down anywhere, so there's just really no reason to worry too much. Get these done. Now, we shouldn't... 24 kill. We shouldn't even need to console command these. We're going to enslave as well, and this should really help with our population growth. I was going to say, if, that, if we'd have lost that then, I would have been fuming. Um, but yeah, we are going to take both of these settlements, and you can see just instantly how much more money we're making now. 4,500, and we've taken these two settlements in quick succession. Now, these guys here, if we have a look, the only way they can get through to Sparta is by going through this way, past us, or past the GCS that's our allies. So... We are not going to worry about them at all. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave behind the Helot Slingers. I'm going to take all of this army back to Sparta. And we're going to reconvene here. Now, if I was doing this personally myself, what I would do is attack Kaidonia straight away. So let's do that. Let's bring both of the generals and the armies out. And let's attack them. And that's not really much of an army, really, is it? And we've got actual good troops now, the Skiritai and the Perioikoi Hoplites. So this would be no problem whatsoever for us. Do have some cavalry, but that is not an issue at all. So we've got to make sure that we do win this and just push them back into the sea. Now, I will do one more battle, I think, on this campaign, guys. So... We'll try and do one more little battle. We're going to also get all these guys. We're also recruiting a Helot Slinger just to be a garrison somewhere. This guy also needs to come across. So let's do that. Now, now we're in a good situation. And we are good uh, economically. What I'm going to do in Sparta, instead of building um, any more economic buildings... I mean, the Spartan cavalry requires second-tier stables... So if we look at the building roster here, second tier stables, we can actually get up to that. So I'm going to start going for that now and going for more military buildings. And then in um, this one over here, if we delete that, let's repair these buildings. We need to find a good recruitment hub somewhere else. And I think in terms of the best place... Probably just getting Megalopolis into a good recruitment hub is good as well. The one thing you want to be wary with Megalopolis, guys, is they are an emergent faction. So they may emerge at some point. But when they do that, just go and crush them. And you should be fine. Oh, I didn't even delete the Ellis recruitment there. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. 
Uh, but we didn't get anyone upgraded the town yet, did we? But these little small towns, you can see, those enslavements really have helped. Yeah, Lepron is very close. One turn ago, it was about 1,400. So it's taken 500 in the last turn, which is fantastic for us. Now, I'm going to leave the Antigonids to decide whatever they want to do. And they can choose whatever they want to do. That's no problem whatsoever. We've beaten Kaidonia back. And you can see the Achaeans are likely going to attack us soon. But like I've said previously, guys, do not worry about this. This is not going to be a problem. Even if you're on a two-front war, what I would suggest is because the Antigonids are a lot bigger, is going after the Achaeans rather than the Antigonids uh, if the Achaeans do attack us. Because you can take the Achaeans out very quickly and then you'll be in a good situation. So guys, we have retrained our troops. We have sent the Kaidonians packing. Let's also risk this. Let's not risk this. I didn't realize it was two ships. Just remember, guys, when it is a ship battle in RIS, it is heavily, heavily likely that one side will lose all their ships. Whichever side loses will lose all of their ships, not just one or two ships. So uh, do remember that if you are going for a battle like that, stupid of me, we're going to lose that ship. So we are now have no ship, but I wanted to lose it anyway. It's done a little bit of damage to these guys, but you can see that by doing a ship battle, you don't retreat anymore. You just basically lose. Um, but we're in a pretty darn good situation, I've got to say. The Achaeans haven't quite attacked us yet. We've got alliance with Epirus, trade with pretty much all of Greece. And just remember, one little tip with trade agreements, guys, is if the AI offers you trade and nothing else, just trade, nothing else, it is highly likely, this is a really weird quirk of Rome Total War, and I don't know why or how the engine <laughs> copes with this, or why the engine does this, but this, this happens in vanilla as well, guys, not just RAS. If they offer you trade, and they are bordering you, they are very likely to attack you within the next couple of turns. So take that as a forewarning if an AI offers you trade that they are going to attack you. Just keep that in mind. It's a nice little tip to have and something to think about. But we can now see that the Antigonids are outside of Argos. That is a very beautiful thing to see, guys. Whenever you see a draw-out battle like this, then you have to take it. It is beautiful. But we are going to do a little bit of building first because now we have trade now with Ellis, which is fantastic. So I'm also going to have a look at now whether the roads are going to increase trade. I mean, it says 100% on here, but I'm assuming, yes, it's land trade for the roads, obviously. And we only make 22 from the land trade currently. So it's definitely not worth building that over something like the communal farming, for example. Also, Ellis potentially could be a new recruitment hub for us. And in fact, I am going to do that because it has all the buildings in place already. Olympia is just a town, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to build this into a recruitment hub as well. And that is a, this is the point now where you're making a lot of money, you're doing well attacking everyone, but you're a bit hot, um, you know, hampered by your military. This is the point now when we need to start not just investing in economic buildings because we're going to make a lot of money sieging down all these settlements from the Antigonids. We need to start investing in our military and becoming a much richer nation because we're going to be conquering even more. So, let's have a look at Megalopolis then. What do we want to build in here? Let's have a look at the land trade here. There's actually a decent amount of land trade here. So, it would be slightly better to build the roads, but they're still not worth it. Not quite yet. It's still too small. Presai over this way. I am going to build the roads in Prasai, although they don't offer anything just yet. It's just to get ready to build paved roads later, and also for our armies to pass through here a little bit quicker. Leprion, we haven't got anything we can build, and we've got nothing we can build there as well. Now, we are going to keep on recruiting constantly, guys, in here, just in case we need to keep on recruiting a lot more. And we are going to go and attack this army at Argos. You can see we've got Alois... Aristopos of Argos, some Phalangites, and in the second army, we've got some more cavalry and some hoplites. Unfortunately, we have very little cavalry, so that's going to be a major issue for us in this fight. However, we have some absolutely beastly spearmen in our generals, 
So we should be okay. And we've got a couple of other good units around as well. So I don't think it's going to be too bad. The only issue is going to be chasing down the enemy once we've routed them. So hopefully we can do this as a draw out battle and take the settlement in one turn. So let's actually do this battle, guys, and I will see you there. So here we are, guys, and actually the enemy's coming in from behind us over here. Greek Peltas and Tarantine Cavalry. So what I might actually do... No, we're actually just going to go straight for them. So I don't, I don't think we need to worry about those Peltas and Tarantines too much, because the Tarantines are missile cavalry as well. So we're going to go straight for them. If you want to know how to do this, guys... You hold alt and you drag the army. If you want to move it, then you hold control while holding alt and dragging. And then drag again and you can uh, spin them around a little bit. So the plan here is to get them engaged and then use my generals to flank. Because the generals are so strong that them flanking is going to be brutal for the enemy troops. So we're going to go straight in for the fight here. He's also going to charge into the Skiritai, which is actually a fantastic idea by him. Because they, of course, are a sword unit. And will not do well against the bodyguards. So well done to him. Good AI tactics there. We're going to counter charge his other general. Which is going to be quite brutal. But if we can get our generals behind and killing them. We, remember we've got to kill the generals guys to take the city in this one battle. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and squeeze through this gap if we can. Go through there. Go through there my men. I'm going to get the uh, cavalry into the fight as well. Keep going. Keep going. Those Skiritai have taken an absolute battering right now. Remember, we are on very hard. So let's keep going. And let's get our general in behind as well so we can kill Alois. And that should really help us with the rest of the battle. They do also have some hoplites. I did not realize that one. We may have to go back for retraining after this battle because it's so, so brutal. Kill, 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 kill him. There we go. Good. Now we've killed him. So this guy needs to get into this fight here. You guys should also charge after them. And we're going to get these guys in here to, to go around and flank the enemy. This poor hoplite has taken a battering. It's not a bad hoplite unit either. It's a really good one. And that is just a standard Greek hoplite. But of course, remember, we are playing on very hard. So that is very likely it. So let us get through there. You are chasing after the second general. Has he died? Okay, he has. Fantastic. Good. Right. These two units. Let's get into those Greek Peltas. We're now going to charge in the back there with this Skiritai. And fully surround these boys. And that should really help us out in this fight. They have lost both their generals. So they shouldn't be so happy. This fight though is going to be a lot more difficult now. That we don't have any, um, uh, any cavalry. Like it's going to be really difficult to do anything about this. So... Let's bring the, uh, these boys up here. I also want to bring you up here because I want you to fire at these boys. So we're, we're going to try and sandwich this unit if we can. Because the Chalka Speed Airs are going to be very difficult to try and fight on one front. And we're try hopefully going to destroy these armies before the enemies come. Because that, of course, is going to be bad. <laughs> so we really, that's why I went for that attack straight away. Because it's a lot better idea. You guys fire in the back of there. Come on. Hurry up, my men. Hurry up. These guys are going for the charge now. Turn around, then. Turn around and face them. Now, these boys over here, all doing relatively decent now. Shaken these boys. This unit is only going to be used now to chase the enemy. So, what I want to do is fire into that uh, Greek Peltas. What I actually would like to do here as well is bring these guys through. So, they've got a clear line of sight on the Chalka Speeders. And if we can get behind as well, that would be fantastic. Always try and maneuver those uh, those missile troops around the troops. Now, this unit is going to be a bit battered here, but all its purpose is is to just hold the Chalka Speeders while the general kills them. Now, we can probably fire in the Chalka Speeders. These guys have started running now, which is great for us. How many are they down to? We need to try and kill 85% of this army, remember? So, you guys get after them. You guys get now in a line, ready to face the second army. Because these guys need to keep firing their javelins. Good. Right in the back of the Chalka Speeders. And they are doing some serious damage. Now we're going to fire in the back of the Peltasts. Try, hopefully break them. And we have a second uh, our army ready to kill all those troops that are coming. These cavalry need to kill as many as they can. Wait. They, uh, they are now wavering this, this unit. What about these boys? Shaken. 
I think a few more Javi shots should get rid of these boys. So keep on going, my men. Let's rally the boys as well. And keep firing. In fact, while we're here, just dip into them and kill them if you can. Now we're going to go after those Greek Peltasts. And the Skiritai down to six men. Wow. Well, let's get over here and let's start firing down on them. You guys get there. The Cryptia actually did a fantastic job. Probably because they have silver experience. I'm not going to lie. Probably not for any other reason than that. So we're going to get our Slingers over here to start firing down at the enemy Greek Peltasts. We're also going to get these guys. If they can fire their last couple of jabbies off, that'd be good. And then charge them. We should. If you hold alt, guys, you can see why the enemy is unhappy. And we can see they're unhappy over taking casualties. So we're going to charge into there. We're going to get the Greek Slingers to fire down this way. And remember, this is playing on very hard, guys. So it's as hard as it can get. So our troops have a lot less attack and defense. Well, I think it's just attack than the enemy troops, but I'm not 100% certain on that one. In fact, we want this slinger guy to be firing at the Tarantines, if possible, because they are the biggest threat to us, uh, and we need to kill as many of those boys as we can. I want you to get them. Okay, don't get them then. Now you need to turn around so you do not take this charge quite as badly, but you're going to take it terribly anyway. Um, luckily, we do have a general here. So let's turn and go and try and surround these boys. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Why are you dying so quickly? What's happened? Oh, it's the Javis, isn't it? Try and get them then. This is a brutal battle. But if we can surround this Tarantine Cavalry, it's going to be very helpful for us. And hopefully, once they break, the Chalka Speeders will break as well. Chalka Speeders have been a nightmare here. Right, guys, get here. And you guys engage them, and we're going to try and flank them with the Perioikois. The, uh, the Skiritai should be decent in combat against these boys, but what we found on very hard is that they have not been that good, have they? So, <laughs> so there's the Tarantines gone. 32 of them left. Now, that is not ideal for us, because, remember, we need to make sure that we kill them all for us to take the city. And how many have we killed? They've got 28% left. So we need to make sure that this unit and this unit pretty much full, fully die uh, for us to win this bat uh, to win the city uh, from them as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to come around. This, this Skiritai, let's just get you to chase them down. In fact, where is the Javi boys? Yeah, you should go and chase them down. No, actually, we've got a cavalry up here, haven't we? So when they're done with them, they can kill them. And I think we're fine for the first army. It's more that second army that's going to be a problem. So we need to get our helots here. Right, general, let's come down. You guys come down as well. And we're going to go with the general on this side as well. Um, and hopefully we'll have enough, you know, stamina to actually chase these guys down when we can. But they are fresh right now. So that's a bit of a problem for us. Our guys are very tired now, so they're going to fight a lot worse. But we do have plenty more troops on the way. So you guys need to fire into these Peltasts. In fact, no. Fire at the Tarantines again. They're the most important unit to fire at. And we're just going to fight this out and grind it out. And I'll see you in a little bit, guys. Oh, my God. That was the most brutal battle I think I've seen for a long, long time. The problem was their general was stuck right in the middle of the blob that we'd surrounded. He was not on one side. So if he'd have been killed earlier, everything would have been a lot better. But god damn, that took an absolute age <laughs> to get that done. Luckily, none of our generals died, I don't believe. Yes, fantastic, they didn't. So, uh, yeah, we're going to try and chase them down. I doubt we're going to have the stamina to get there. But I think we've done a pretty darn brutal but good victory. Apparently a close victory. If anything, that was definitely a Pyrrhic victory. But uh, hopefully we'll have taken the settlement. Hopefully. I think we have. I think we have. I mean, we've dominated that army. It's this one. It That should be less than 15%. But oh, we shall see, guys. We shall see. <laughs> you are kidding me. They've got six men in the settlement. We only needed to kill six more men, guys. Six more men.
<laughs> but what we're going to do to bolster our army is, in fact, get some mercenary uh, mercenaries in there. So what I'm going to do is, instead of cancelling buildings, what I am going to do is delete a few buildings that we don't need. So, for example, in Messene, I'm going to put it down to a lower tax rate. I'm going to destroy the Odeon. So that will allow us to build one more. We need 2,000 more. And in Olympia, we definitely don't need this arena. So we should now have enough for these two. And that should bolster our lines if we do get attacked. Because that's what I'm worried about, is one of these armies coming and attacking us. I know they're expensive, but you can use them until they go. Just use them up, destroy them. Uh, and let them uh, let them die, and then you won't be paying the really expensive cost for them anymore. And it's not like we don't have enough money coming in right now. <laughs> We've got plenty of money, we just don't have the troops to support it now. That's why we're also building up our military infrastructure to make sure that we can keep up with the demands of our armies going on these big battles, and especially seen as, you know, our army is not that strong right now. So... I'll probably see you in a couple of turns, guys, with a few more things to do. Looks like we did get attacked. What I was uh, thinking has come true, and I am glad we got those mercenaries. Uh, but this would be a pretty darn easy battle to do, I'm not going to lie. Not that much. They've got two units of Hoplites and then <laughs> seven men. So this would not really be hard at all. So we did auto-resolve it, and we won. But it actually made us win the settlement as well, which is fantastic for us. So we're going to take the settlement and we are going to leave and get retraining very soon. So we now have Argos, which is fantastic for us. And hopefully we can sustain it with four Helot Slingers. That would be fantastic. Let's have a look. Yes, we can go down to low. We can also destroy this. And it's already got a port, which is fantastic. Already making a thousand for us. Don't think we're going to delete anything else. But if we wanted to, we could delete this. But we've got plenty of money for now so i'm going to go back to sparta for retraining because we absolutely need it now we can also retrain these guys i don't know why maybe to get an extra uh, weapon upgrade yeah to get a weapon upgrade which is fine and yeah we're in a decent situation now guys i'm going to try and take corinth and then we'll probably call it a day there so we just had an adoption guys and i wanted to use this opportunity just to highlight something for you when you get an adoption always make sure you have a look at their stats this guy is ignorant charismatic and vigorous so he's not that good intellectually but he should still get some good traits for the management of cities i mean if we look at his stats it's actually not very good but hopefully he can get a bit better by spending some time in a city but when you get a governor that you think can add some money to a city, check all your cities for the richest ones and govern those. Do not govern the poor ones and do not double stack governors in places. No point for that. So we'll do that and then we'll remove this guy from Ellis so that we can retrain them. And we are going to leave Akrotatos back there and go for Corinth. One thing I wanted to highlight to you guys that I uh, learned from Rather Incoherent that I've never really thought of before. If you want to see your income on the labels, you can go to this second screen on the gameplay settings over here that you can see. And you can press show income labels. Now, I have my settlement labels set to none so that the map runs a lot smoother. But if you press space, you can see them all. And now we can actually see all the income of our cities with that as well. So thank you to our Rather Incoherent for that little tip i think is a really good one and allows you to see very easily where you're making the most money one thing to note that you could be doing that i'm not doing guys is taking your garrisons out of inland places so for example megalopolis leprion the wrong reason i'm not doing that is because kaidonia does want to invade us so they could invade somewhere and just take the city and also because, of course, we are bordering the Achaeans up here. So I really don't want to risk it. And I don't want the Aetolians as well coming and declaring war on us and just taking one of our settlements really easily from this island. Because the AI tends to like to uh, boat bomb you now. So, yeah, you can take people out of these places, but they're so cheap. Like, how much is this? 56 a turn. No point really getting that guy retrained or anything like that. Same with this one. What is that? 222. Maybe worth it getting him in the army. But these units are so terrible anyway 
that it doesn't really matter and they're not going to cost you too much money, but to really min-max it, that's what you'd be doing. And as if by magic, what did I just say? The Aetolians have landed. <laughs> Literally, as soon as I said that, they've done that. We've taken Corinth now as well, and I've merged up some of the troops. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave the Skiratai behind here. We're going to pop out. We're also going to send this boy back for retraining. Because there's no point having a 32 unit in there. We're going to spend a bit of money on that. And we're going to go straight in for these settlements over here. Now, Corinth now blocks the Antigonids off from coming into here at all. Which is fantastic for us. We can delete that. And it's a really good little city. Definitely one that we want to turn into a recruitment hub. Because it's already a city. So let's get those in and let's also just smash in that Spartan recruitment straight away. So guys, I think we can call it a day there. We've uh, eliminated the Antigonids from this side anyway. We've eliminated Messene and Ellis. We haven't got round to the Achaeans yet, but they are just focused on the rebels here, which is fantastic for us. So I'll let you know what I would do in this situation. We're making 7,000 a turn and I have really focused on economic buildings in a lot of places, but I have now started focusing, transitioning across to building a couple more recruitment hubs, one in Githian, one over here in Ellis, and one in Corinth. So we've got kind of the corners of the island, uh, not the island, the peninsula um, covered off, and also will allow us to recruit troops a lot quicker when we get to it as well, which will be really good. And what I would do now is I would take these two settlements, Hermione and Trozan, take those, just block off the Antigonids from coming into here. They should also be fighting Athens at some point, so they might even be too busy fighting over there. And just block off Corinth here. I've put a general in here because he just came of age, but he actually reduced <laughs> this, but I'm not too bothered about that. I think it'll be up above 70% next turn. So I would take these two settlements here, and then directly next turn, just go straight, re uh, retrain the troops, and go straight for the Achaeans, because we do not want them to build up big armies or any more strength. So we would go straight for the Achaeans, take them out, and then it's pretty much up to you. You can either go after the GCS in the center, go after these rebel settlements. You could even go against Kydonia and go for Crete next and just block off Corinth here with some uh, units to defend the city. And it is really, the world is your oyster at that point. Greece is your oyster, should we say. You can either then go north into the Aetolians, or into the Boeotians and Athens, or go into Crete, or even go for Rhodes for that extra trade income, and some of these islands out there. Really, it's up to you. What I would do personally at this point is take out the Achaeans, take out the rebel settlements, leave the GCS for now, and then go around Athens and take this area and destroy the Boeotians. With that, though, of course, you are basically committing to a long-term war uh, for Greece with because the Aetolians are going to attack you once you've taken them out. The Acarnanians are going to attack you, but it looks like the Aetolians are going to attack us anyway. So it doesn't even matter that uh, if we go around here. But of course, remember to always react to whatever the AI does as well. And remember, even you Sparta stands out there, even you massive Sparta stands, do have something called a brain. So you are a lot better than the AI at conquering. So always remember that and never panic when they come and try and take a city, as long as it's not Sparta, which is your only recruitment hub still. So uh, yeah, if they do come and take Sparta, maybe time to panic. But anywhere else, don't worry about it. Just chill out. Do what you need to do and then go and deal with it. But that is it, guys, I think, for the starting moves and gameplay. This is going to be a very long video, isn't it? Um, but anyway, it's been a pretty comprehensive guide, I've got to say. Difficulty-wise. So I came into this with an idea for Sparta, and it was mainly based off 0.5 gameplay. And Sparta in 0.5 is probably a 3 out of, a three out of 5 in terms of difficulty. But because of that awful starting army, you're not great economy to start with. And the multitude of enemies you might face quite early in the campaign, including the massive empire that is the Antigonids. I think I'm going to give Sparta a 4. A solid 4 out of 5 difficulty. So all you Sparta stands better be prepared. Because I've got to say, 
relatively difficult if you don't know what you're doing. More experienced players will probably be okay, but they're going to be okay with any faction, aren't they? I keep saying that, but they're going to be okay with any faction. So I'm going to say this is a 4 out of 5 in terms of difficulty. Quite a difficult faction, uh, but a really fun one nonetheless. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to be it for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do comment down below what you enjoyed, any more questions that you do have, and do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you all again on the next video.